the brush tool has been enhanced in Animate CC and I'm just going to walk you through some of the ways you can control the brush now and so with the brush selected in properties panel you'll see I have a cool slider for selecting the size of the brush and not only that I have a slider for setting the minimum size of the brush so now when I draw I'm, I'm making good use of that pressure sensitivity so if I increase the size of the brush and, um, and you know play around with the minimum size of the brush you can see how that plays an effect on the stroke and so what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to grab um, uh, I'm going to turn on object drawing mode and I'm going to mix a little bit of transparency into this black color I'm going to do this because what I'm going to do is just sketch out something first and I kind of like to draw this way if I'm just sketching something so let's draw um, let's just create a character and this is for me um, with the transparency mixed in it kind of gives that nice feel of, of like using pencil especially when you have um, the combination of alpha and object drawing mode on you can see the layering of transparency okay so I've got a, a nice little character roughed out here in this video I'm going to show you a new tool called the asset warp tool so here I have a character uh, all of its parts are nested inside a symbol. I'm going to double click because this is where we're going to actually perform the animation. And here in the timeline, you'll notice I have three different layers. The match head itself, this symbol here. Um, I have the flame art itself. And while we're at it, let's name that. And then the bottom layer is the stick. I'm going to lock the stick layer and the match head layer for now because we're not going to be editing those. And I'm going to convert those to outlines because I just want to concentrate visually on the flame itself. So the Acid Warp tool is this icon here. It's a little push pin icon. And once selected, all we need to do is click inside the artwork itself to start placing pins. So the first pin placement I'm going to make down here, basically where the flame connects with the matchstick. And now this pin is represented here by the center dot and this outer dashed circle. And you'll also notice a mesh has been applied to my shape. So let's create a few more additional pins. I'm just going to click in the artwork where I know I'm going to want to control the artwork. And that should pretty much do it. And now the fun part where we get to animate this shape. And in the flame layer that contains our flame artwork, I'm going to create a keyframe on every other frame. And so now in this second keyframe here on frame three this is where I'm going to start to manipulate my mesh using the asset warp tool there are many ways to draw inside of Adobe animate CC and I'm going to show you one of my favorite ways using mostly primitive tools in combination with object drawing mode, snap to objects, and a little bit of editing with the selection tool, which is the black arrow up here on top. Now the first thing I want to do is to make sure that I can see all of the available tools in my toolbar as well as their sub selection. So I'm going to just click and drag the left edge to create two columns as we see here. Now I can see everything that the toolbar has to offer. Now I want not just the rectangle tool, but the rectangle primitive tool. So I long press to bring that other option up and I'm going to select rectangle primitive. Now you'll notice in properties panel, I have a rectangle options section and the slider, which is currently at its default setting of zero. What that does is allows me to adjust how the corners look on the primitive I'm going to create. So let me actually set this back to zero just to show you. I have a skin tone here I already like, um, but I'm going to make a shape for you and just kind of give you an idea of what this option does here, this slider. So if I just click and drag that, you'll notice the corners of my shape will change and adjust accordingly. If I slide the slider all the way to the left, the corners invert. And if I slide it all the way to the right, I get the most rounded corners. Okay. Having said that, let me actually delete this and start over. What I like to do is grab this rectangle tool and before I do anything, slide that all the way to the right to a value of 100. And I'm going to start by drawing the character's head. Lip syncing has always been a tedious task, something we've never looked forward to as animators. But now, thanks to the new auto lip sync feature in Adobe Animate CC, lip syncing is a breeze. 
So I have on the stage a graphic symbol containing my character. I'm going to double click it. And so you can see all the various layers with all the various body parts. You'll notice I have an audio layer with an imported MP3 containing some voiceover. So now let's click on the mouth symbol. It's a graphic symbol. And if we double click, I can show you that inside this symbol, I have all of my mouths set up. I'm using two layers for the artwork. And then you'll notice the top layer are my frame labels. They're just blank keyframes. And when I click inside each one in the properties panel next to label in this field, I can type in anything I want. And I've chosen descriptive names that correspond to the actual mouth shapes. You'll notice in the properties panel, a new button called lip syncing. So let's click on that. And this brings up a panel where we get to choose the different corresponding vice themes for each sound. So neutral's fine. That's the closed mouth. That's what we want. For ah, uh, I'm going to click this mouth here. I'm going to click right in this thumbnail. It's going to open up another panel allowing us to actually see all of the nested frames that contain the mouths and, and the corresponding frame labels. So for the duh sound, I'm going to choose that mouth shape. So all you need to do is repeat the process of selecting each vice theme and uh, matching them with their corresponding sounds. Layer parenting is a cool new feature in Adobe Animate CC and here's how easy it is. So here I have a character inside a graphic symbol. If I double click this symbol you can see all of the layers and symbols that make up this character. All of the symbols have been distributed to layers and we're pretty much ready to start layer parenting. One note before I get into the layer parenting is I have already set the center point for all these symbols. And what I mean is, I select the symbol and then select the free transform tool. I have moved this center point from the center position, which is the default for the center point. And I've moved it to a more natural, anatomically correct location uh, where body parts would normally and naturally hinge, right? So you can see the thigh has been hinged at the hip and the lower leg has been hinged at the knee and so forth. The upper arm is hinged at the shoulder, the forearm hinged at the elbow, and naturally the head hinged at the neck. So once that is all done, now we can start layer parenting. We need to show the parenting view. So here in the timeline, click this icon here. This is the show parenting view icon. Now the next thing to do is decide what is going to be the parent layer or the parent symbol. In this case, with this character, I want it to be the torso. So the first thing I want to do is you can see I have a symbol here that is acting as the pelvis for this character. The pelvis is going to be a child of the torso. So in order to parent layers together, all you need to do is click in here in the parenting view and drag from the child layer to the layer that you want the parent to be. So in this case, I'm dragging from the pelvis layer to the torso layer. Now you can see the layer parenting path take place. Now the next step is to parent the pelvis to the thigh. So let's click on the thigh layer and drag it to the pelvis. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use layer effects. And what's really cool about layer effects is that before we could only apply these effects or filters to the instances of movie clips. But now we can apply them to layers, which means that anything that resides inside a layer can have an effect applied to them. So to demonstrate this, I have a graphic symbol that contains a nested animation of a walk cycle. So let's say we want to add a realistic shadow to this character. We can do that through the use of layer effect. So what I'm going to do is right click over the layer containing our animation and I'm going to duplicate the layer. I'm going to drag this layer below the original layer. And let's rename it walk cycle shadow. Okay, so now I'm going to lock the top layer and I'm also going to convert it to outlines just so it's easier to see the layer underneath and what I'm doing. I'm going to select the instance on the stage and grab the free transform tool and I'm going to position the center point down here. And this is just going to allow me to then scale the artwork like this. And maybe even skew it over like this. Now what we want to do is just click on the frame in this layer. And now you'll notice in the properties panel we can apply filters. So using the drop down menu, I'm going to select drop shadow. If I scrub the timeline, you'll notice that this effect is applied to the entire layer. And so for this shadow to look convincing, we're going to need to actually play around with some of these settings. So the first thing we want to do is hide the object. This will actually hide the original artwork and just show us the drop shadow. You might want to apply just a subtle amount of blur. So maybe a value of three will work really well. Strength, if you reduce the amount of strength, 
will lower the opacity of the shadow itself. And this is great if you have, say, a background that has lots of different colors and things like that, and you want them to show through. Uh, quality is up to you if you want to set it to low, medium, or high. I'm going to keep it at medium. I typically just set the distance to zero. And so now when we scrub our timeline, Adobe Animate CC introduces a way for us to create VR content. To create VR content, go to start a new document like you normally would, but now click all the way down here on the far right, the Advanced tab. And this will bring up a whole new set of documents that uh, you can choose from. And the one we want to select is the VR Panorama document type. My document happens to be set up so that it is 6,000 pixels wide by 600 pixels tall. Now I'm going to hide all these layers and just kind of walk you through what each layer does and what they contain. So the very bottom layer is the sky layer. It's just a simple linear gradient. You'll notice in this type of document here in the timeline panel that there's a new button called Create Texture Wrapping for Layer. You want to convert a layer to a texture layer if it contains artwork that is not animated. These are just clouds, artwork that was drawn inside of Animate. This layer contains the buildings that are furthest in the background and that has been converted to a texture layer. Uh, Midground layer has more buildings, just a little bit, with a little bit more detail, a little bit bigger. And here are um, more buildings and structures with more detail, but a little bit closer to us. As you can see, again, another texture layer. These are the buildings in the very, very foreground. Um, so now the animated content. I'm gonna start with these birds. And you can see if I pan over and zoom in a little bit. And so what this is is a movie clip that contains an animation of just a looping bird flying. And on the main timeline, I'm using a classic tween to send that bird across the entire scene. 